Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Keeping Fish Simple. So in today's video, we have a little bit of an issue. As you guys might have gathered from the thumbnail and the title, we do have an issue with one of our Zebra Plecos. Now, if you guys are wondering why I'm sweating so much, it's just summer here in Australia and this room gets ridiculously hot and humid. So it's pretty hot in this fish room at the moment and I'm also a little bit stressed out, which doesn't help. For all you guys who are wondering why you can see all the sweat on my face, yes, I did get a brand new camera, so that's why. So enjoy seeing all of my pores and stuff like that. That's part of getting the new camera. Anyways, back to the point of the story. So this morning I came in and I was looking through all my Pleco tanks like I normally do. I check out all the fish every time I come in in the morning. And as I was going through the Pleco tanks, I try and do like a little bit of a rough count up, especially on my L46 tanks because those guys are super rare and they're definitely my favorite Pleco in the whole fish room. So I spent a lot of time looking at those guys and I came in and I was looking at my young group. So I've got an old group and a young group. In my young group, we have five and in my old group, we have four. So I've got nine Zebra Plecos total. I was looking through the old one and that was all good. I could see all four Plecos, they were doing fantastic. But then I looked through my young Pleco tank and I could only see four Plecos. So there was one that was missing. And thank God I had a good look around because I was really freaking out. I was going, well, what the hell is happening here? I can't see anything that was wrong. And I lift up a log and I find this little Pleco that's just been stuck under this log. Now, I don't know how long it's been stuck under there for, and I don't know how it got stuck there. It got kind of wedged between the glass and I think that maybe like a log rolled or something or I don't know, it was not good. And I lifted it up and I saw this guy and my heart just like sunk. I, it was like the worst thing I could have seen. I just I freaked out because its tail was all bent. It looked really skinny. It was super pink and red. And I just thought it was done for. So anyways, what I did was like, I, I was just freaking out. I set up a breeder box, which you guys are gonna see. And I put it in the breeder box with a log just to cover it up. And I treated the tank with some Melifix just to help it skin a little bit. And I also treated it with some trisulfur. So that should help with any of the antibacterial things to stop it from getting a skin infection. But as you can see, this Pleco, it has like tons of sores on it. It's not looking too good. It's looking pretty red. And I have seen it actually eat something. So I fed it before, I fed it some pellets and it ate them. So it didn't eat like a heap of them, but it did eat them and its fins actually straightened up a little bit since then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and give this guy a feed with some uh, baby brine shrimp and we might add just a little bit more Melifix because you can't really overdose that stuff just to try and help those sores a little bit. We're gonna keep monitoring this guy and babying him until he's ready to go back in that tank, hopefully. I really, fingers crossed, hope this guy survives, I mean, for all you guys who don't know, Zebra Plecos here in Australia are worth anywhere from 600 bucks each to 500 bucks each, even up to 1,000 bucks each, depending on the size. And this isn't about the money, but this is about making sure this fish gets through. And I absolutely love these fish and they're super endangered in the wild and I wanna do everything I can. And I mean, I'm so frustrated that it's such a stupid mistake. Like, I know it's probably not my fault, but I still feel terrible about it. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I'm probably not gonna sleep well tonight. So let's go have a look at this Zebra Pleco. Okay, so I came back the following day and had a look at the Pleco, and luckily enough, the Pleco is doing a lot better. Now, Little Zeb's body is really straightened up quite well, which is really good to see because it means that he doesn't have any broken bones or anything like that that are gonna cause any long-term problems, and it means he's probably gonna make a full recovery. Now, he was still pretty red and he was still really beaten up, but he was eating, and I keep saying he, I don't know whether it's a he or a girl or whatever, but we're just gonna assume for now it's a boy because he looks the most like a boy. He was eating tons of baby brine shrimp, doing really well. I actually went through the container and did a little bit of a clean out just to make sure none of that decaying matter would cause like a fungal infection on him or a bacterial infection on him because at the moment, the thing that I'm most concerned about is any of those sores or any of those wounds on him becoming infected. Now that's why I've treated the aquarium with trisulfa and as well as Melifix. So hopefully these two things will work really well together to prevent a bacterial infection from happening. But for the moment in time, we're just gonna leave this guy in here, continue to feed him his baby brine shrimp and Hopefully he'll heal up over the next coming days and we don't run into any more problems. Also on the topic of rescuing fish, here in Australia it's currently storm season. And what storm season means is it's just a time of the year when there's just tons of these electrical storms going throughout the city. And during these times, the power can frequently go out and I haven't had any power outages for a long time, but I don't wanna risk anything happening to the fish room in regards to the power going out, causing any problems in the fish room. So I thought it was finally time to invest in some battery backup power. And as you can see here, I bought this little battery backup. I'm not too sure what it's called. I'm not intending on using it all the time. All I'm intending on using it for is keeping it plugged in so that when the power does go out, if it does go out, 
I can then use this battery backup to keep the air pump going and at least keep air running to the whole fish room. So the fish room can withstand not having air for quite a long period of time, but not a couple of days. But as long as I've got this battery backup, I can then switch the power over to this battery backup and keep our air pumps running during a power outage. So you can see I found a nice little spot here behind the air pump to store this guy. And I've got him plugged in and charging up so that he's ready to go when we do need him. We also had to rearrange some cords and stuff like that just to make room for him. But this has given me a lot of peace of mind knowing that during a power outage, I do have some kind of backup that will be able to last me a couple of days with power until the power does eventually go back on if there is an issue. So there is always that risk of something going wrong, but at least now this risk isn't as big as it used to be. Okay, so it's been about a week now since we've had our little Zeb incident and I just wanted to quickly update you guys and let you know that our little Zeb has been just doing fantastic. He's already started to grow back his fins, he's looking really good, he's super active and he's been eating well. I've been feeding him heaps of baby brine shrimp and some frozen brine shrimp as well just to get that protein up. I did notice after the second day, I don't know whether it was his skin healing or something like that, but there was a couple of little white like kind of fungusy looking things that were on him. So I quickly treated the aquarium straight away. I treated with trisulfur and that stuff works perfectly. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below. I only treat that for a day on the full dose and then I'll take that out the next day. And if it needs to be continued after that, I'll do that like a couple of days after and do another treatment the exact same way. So he's doing great. He's uh, still got like a little bit of damage on his fins, but it's gonna come back. And I think that it's time for him to go back into the main aquarium. He could be continued to be babied in here, but I don't think there's gonna be any other risks of any other issues. So I'm just gonna throw him back in this tank. We're gonna heavily monitor it. I think he's gonna do absolutely fine. I'm just, you know, counting my blessings. I'm so thankful that he did make it and I got there just in time. I mean, if you have a look at what he did look like previously compared to what he looks like now, it's just a, a dramatic difference. And it's so amazing because you rarely, rarely can fix sick fish and heal sick fish. So to be able to do it with one of my rarest species and a species that I care most about, is just fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is take him out of his breeder box, take down the breeder box and put him back in the tank. So you can see here, I disassembled the box by taking out the air pump and then I slowly tried to introduce the little fella back into the tank. He went back in, and if I'm being honest, he wasn't even that stressed. He seems to be doing really well. You can see here, his fins are a little bit damaged, but I think that over time, they're gonna really heal back and come good. So it's super satisfying to see him doing well. I'm just counting my blessings that he did make it and he's doing fantastic now. So again, I'm not too sure why this happened. I'm not too sure what was the cause of that piece of driftwood rolling. I guess now what we're gonna be doing is making sure that all the ornaments within these tanks aren't able to move or trap fish underneath them. And that way we're not gonna have any more issues in the future. Also, just cause I know I'm gonna get questions, I really quickly wanted to come over and show you what's happening over on the fry system. Now you can see here, we've had another issue with raising our rams. In the last video, we took a batch of eggs from our Dark Knight Rams out to try and hatch ourselves. And these guys just didn't make it again. I've tried to come to some conclusion on why this continues to happen. And in my opinion, I think it's just because I'm missing feedings. I am a little bit frustrated about this, but I do have some solutions that are gonna be coming out in a future video. So stay tuned for that. Also, just before this video ends, I really quickly wanted to give you guys an update on our little Epistogramma Agassizii Fire Golds. If you guys would remember, we bred these guys a few episodes ago and on the last video, I did get a couple of comments asking how they're going and they're doing really, really good. I haven't had a single loss since I've moved them into this tank and they've actually started to put on a lot of size. Something interesting about them is they already start to look like little versions of the adult fish. So you can see they've got that red stripe up the back of them and they've started to get some gold on them, which is really good. I'm really happy about this because it means that they're probably gonna have a lot of color as adults. And something that's happened previously in my attempts at breeding any epistogrammas is that I can't get the same amount of color as the ones that are imported because the ones that are imported have tons of hormones in them to get the color out. So mine just don't look as good as the ones that are imported. And then shops and other consumers don't wanna buy my fish. So that's been a little bit annoying, but I don't think I'm gonna face this problem with this fish. And if that's the case, I'm definitely gonna consider breeding these guys more large scale in the future, depending on how I go with selling them all. So they will be available on my website down below in about two months time, I'd say, and I will be selling them as pairs. So that means that you guys can have a go at trying to breed them. They'll be a lot more hardy than the imported ones, hopefully. I guess I'll just keep you guys updated with their progress as they continue to grow and develop. So I guess that's gonna wrap everything up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like down below and I'll see you in the next one.